Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russell here and Canada has just released its newest inflation data and well, it's the highest inflation rate that we've seen, seen since May of 2011. But is that something we need to be worried about? Well, in today's video, we're going to go over some key takeaways about what's actually driving this rate up and how it might not be exactly what you think. We're gonna compare Canada to the US and talk about how that might actually be an indication of where we're going uh, rather soon here. We're also gonna talk about the creative way that real estate is included so that they can say they're including real estate, but they're actually not including the run-up of real estate prices. And finally, we're going to talk about what I think the Bank of Canada is going to do about it. And as always, the number one way to protect yourself against inflation is to invest your money. So if you want to open up an account, you can check out the links in the description where you can do so, or you can even learn a little bit about my recommended ways to invest and some basic market fundamentals that I think it's important for you to know with that Canada Money Mastery coupon code GROW for 40% off. Check that out and see if it's a good fit for you. But now let's get into this information. Now, many of you who watch this channel already know that inflation here in Canada is measured by the CPI or the Consumer Price Index. Index. And that consumer price index, well, it's gone up to, again, its highest rate since May of 2011, uh, all the way up to 3.6%. Now, this is up from last month, where our most recent data was at 3.4%. Now, there are a couple key categories of the CPI that have boosted up in price that have resulted in this increase in price. Uh, and they note here that some of these costs were in shelter and in passenger vehicles. But there are some interesting ways that the CPI is actually made up and I wanna show you the data for each individual category. This chart covers every single individual category that makes up the CPI, including food, shelter, household operations, furnishings and equipment, clothing and footwear, transportation, health and personal care, recreation, education and reading, and alcoholic beverages, tobacco products, and recreational cannabis. And it compares this from our most recent data as of last month, which was April 2021 data. Remember, we get this data about a month after uh, the data actually comes in. Uh, and the most recent data as of May 2021. And there are some some interesting things that we can see here in this chart that gives us a better idea of how they're actually coming up with this number. The light blue bars are showing you the data from last month and the dark blue bars are showing you the data from this month. And you can see here that in both of those months, the largest or the highest rate of inflation was in the transportation category. Um, last month it showed a 9.4% inflation rate and this month it showed a 7.6%. So the overall rate of inflation in transportation is down from last month, but it's actually the highest part of this inflation number uh, when you compare it to what the inflation rates are for all of these other categories. From this chart, you can also see that the highest month to month inflation increase, well, that was in shelter. You can see right here, 4.2% this month versus last month at 3.2 and clothing and footwear with 3.9% inflation this month and only 1.8% inflation last month. Now, this gets a little bit more interesting when we take into consideration which of these baskets or which of these categories is actually weighted more heavily in side of the CPI. So here you can see that some of the categories that increase the most, including shelter, well, it's actually weighted rather heavily in the CPI at 27.36%. Now, there is some debate around how real estate works into the CPI because real estate prices actually don't work into it relatively at all, but we're going to get into that in just a minute. But you can also take note here that transportation, you remember that went down from last month, but it's still rather high compared to the other rates of inflation. Well, that's at 19.95% percent of the weighting of the basket. So these categories that are relatively high are also relatively highly weighted inside of the baskets of goods that uh, makes up the CPI. Now Stats Canada, the people who put together this data, well, they're blaming the relatively high inflation rate here on the transportation category, as we talked about there, but only one section of the transportation category, which is gasoline costs. Now they're saying that this is the main driver of the most recent increased inflation numbers. And let me show you why. We'll flip over here. This is actually charts out the cost of gas here in Canada. And you'll notice back in uh, 2020, at the beginning of the pandemic, you might remember oil prices tanked and gas prices tanked alongside. Uh, so you can see this was the lowest cost of gas in Canada uh, about a year ago. And now we're at a relatively high cost of gas a year later. Now, with the, this inflation data, they actually compare it this year back to where uh, 
where the gas prices were exactly one year ago today. So because we have high gas prices now and low gas prices a year ago, well, that inflation number is essentially inflated. And Stats Canada made sure to point this out by actually providing this graph, which is a 12 month change in the consumer price index and also comparing that to what it would be if they just excluded gasoline from this CPI. And you'll notice here the actual CPI that we have today, well, you can see that's at 3.6% as we've already talked about. But if you uh, exclude gasoline, well, then it's at a little bit more manageable of a rate of 2.5%. So they're sort of saying, hey, don't worry too much about inflation because if we take away gas prices, well, it's actually not that big of a deal uh, because we're only at 2.5%. Now, remember, we're going to get into how exactly they're massaging real estate prices into this CPI, as well as what I think the Bank of Canada is going to do about this higher inflation number. But first, I want to compare us to the US. Now, take a look at this chart that was included uh, on the Bloomberg article from this morning. It shows Canada's inflation relative to uh, to uh, America's. Now, I'm going to move myself over here so you can actually see the chart here. But you'll notice, OK, America's inflation, that was at 5% as of the most recent data, and we we're only at 3 0.6%. Now, there are a couple different things that sort of work into why this might be the case. And we actually might be able to use the US as a sort of a forecast for where we might be heading. Uh, first of all, that's because of the vaccination, uh, how US the US has actually reopened more quickly than Canada. And many places in Canada are still in some sort of COVID lockdown. Now, many people believe that when these economies fully reopen, and people are actually able to go out and spend their money, well, maybe we'll see Canada's inflation rate get up to that 5% which the Bank of Canada would certainly be worried about. Uh, now, the other side of things is the fact that right now we have a very high Canadian dollar. Now, when you think about it, if we have a high Canadian dollar, the cost for us to import goods from other countries like the US, well, that goes down because our dollar is more valuable compared to the US dollar than it was before. So this has also kept our inflation prices low because of this strong dollar effect. And much of the monetary policy here in Canada, well, it's imported from the States, our central bank at the Bank of Canada largely takes cues from the Federal Reserve in the States. So it's going to be interesting to see what actually happens in the States and how that might transition uh, into what happens in Canada just a couple of months later. So we're going to be keeping our eyes on that. But now we need to talk a little bit about how basically this CPI data, many people believe, hey, this doesn't really match what I'm seeing. My cost of living has gone way up since the beginning of the pandemic. How can it only be under 4% right now? Well, it largely has to do with what's included in the CPI and what isn't included in the CPI. And one of the biggest categories of that CPI is shelter, but it doesn't actually include home prices. And Stats Canada explains this saying the CPI does not include the purchase price of a property and that this is because a house is considered an asset rather than a consumer good. Now instead, the CPI measures all the costs associated with owning and living in a property, such as the homeowner's replacement cost, mortgage interest costs, property taxes, homeowners, home and mortgage insurance, homeowners maintenance and repairs, and other owned accommodation expenses, such as commission and legal fees on the sale of real estate. So instead of actually including real estate prices and what they're selling for, well, they're sort of using this sort of secondary market of related real estate costs to measure that. Now, this is where things get interesting because one aspect that the Bank of Canada actually controls is what's driving down this shelter inflation rate. And if things were to change on that front, well, the shelter inflation rate would be way higher. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. We'll take a look over here at the graph. Actually, I'm going to go to this border so you can see things a little bit more clearly here. Now, this shows what makes up the shelter component of the CPI, rent accommodation, rent, owned accommodation, mortgage interest costs. You can see that in most categories, inflation has gone up in this shelter category, but there's one category where inflation has gone down and they actually consider it deflation, and that is mortgage interest cost. Now, since the beginning of the pandemic, the Bank of Canada has been buying up bank or buying up government of Canada bonds to push interest rates down. Now, because those interest rates are so, so low right now, well, the average homeowner is paying less on their mortgage, even though house prices are going up and they're actually paying 8% less on a monthly basis to pay the mortgage than they were one year ago. Now, if the Bank of Canada were to stop pushing down interest rates, it's likely that this would actually have gone up with the rest of the cost of housing. Uh, and that would be more in tune with it what people are actually seeing in the markets right now, rather than it being so much deflated because of this mortgage interest aspect of the shelter portion of the CPI. If 
interest rates were to ever start creeping up like they're projecting the Bank of Canada is going to allow for them to do in 2022, well, then this mortgage interest cost would go way up. And in fact, in about five years, because the average mortgage is over the course of five years, that's the period of the mortgage uh, after which mo homeowners need to renew their mortgage. Well, it's likely that if interest rates are higher uh, well, compared to the time that uh, interest rates were low, well, we're going to see a large degree of inflation in the shelter part of the index because the mortgage costs are going to be so much higher. But that's something that's likely to come down the line. But what's the Bank of Canada actually going to do about this inflation? You might remember if you've watched the channel that the Bank of Canada is targeting a 2% inflation and they're comfortable with a band between 1% and 3%, but they want to aim for that 2% sweet spot. Now, the Bank of Canada, seeing this 3.6% inflation rate, well, it doesn't look like they're gonna do anything about it, even though it's outside of the band. And I'll tell you why. It's largely due to something called base year effects, which you may already know about if you've been following this channel. Essentially, when they compare the CPI, they're comparing the current CPI to the CPI of a year ago. Now, they're saying that the only reason that inflation looks so high right now is because we're comparing it to a year ago. So the Bank of Canada largely thinks that over time, this is going to actually slow down and we might see inflation creep back down to the 2% where they're comfortable. So they don't want to make any action or overcorrect because they think that this rate is actually only due to the fact that we had low inflation and even deflation at the beginning of the pandemic. Tiff Macklem's actually scheduled to testify in front of the Canadian Senate uh, as of tonight. So I'm going to be keeping my eyes on that to see if he reveals anything more about the Bank of Canada's stance on this new inflation data. But in the meantime, I'm really curious on what you think about all of this. Do you think that this CPI data accurately reflects what you're seeing in your day-to-day -day life? Or uh, do you find any parts of this interesting in the way that they actually put together this CPI? Either way, let me know down in the comments. I read every single one and try to reply to as many as I possibly can. And while you're down there, make sure to check out the coupon code GROW for 40% off the Canada Money Mastery Program. Remember, the number one way that you can hedge against inflation is to have your money invested in assets because they sort of go up along with inflation. But we talk about that a ton in that program. So check it out, see if it's a good fit for you and I'll see you in there if it is. But with all of that said, Thanks so much for watching everybody. I really hope this video helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time. This channel is supported by viewers like you. Thanks channel members.